Hello, my name is Andy. And I am the Village Idiot. And I'm armed with a car and a GoPro. And an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to Newark and Sherwood, where today we're taking on England's last open field village. This is Laxton and Morehouse. Laxton and Morehouse is a civil parish in the Newark and Sherwood district within the county of Nottinghamshire and it consists of two settlements, these being a village called Laxton and a hamlet called Morehouse. The parish was previously known just as Laxton until 1990 when Morehouse was included in the title. The population includes that of both Ompton and Ossington and at the 2011 census this was 489. We begin in Laxton, a small village situated about 25 miles northeast of Nottingham city centre. It's best described as a working heritage village. This is the second time we've seen a Laxton on the channel. The first time was back in the East Riding. There the name had a meaning to do with fish, but here it's believed to come from the Anglo-Saxon Lexington, meaning the farmstead or estate of the people of a man called Lexa. Now, of course, uh, a few of my viewers out there live in the United States. Now, if any of you are familiar with Massachusetts and Lexington, Massachusetts, this village has got a connection to it, Lexington Court. And the connection is not just this name, not just the name of this street. It's the fact that Lexington in Massachusetts is actually named after this village, Laxton. And there you go. Bet that's something you didn't know. And thus, ultimately, all of the other towns named Lexington in the United States. So we're quite a distance away from Thorsby here, but as you can see, these farms have got the Thorsby uh, livery, the, the logo uh, on each one. Uh, there's a number of farms along this road here that I'm on now. Step Farm is just one of them. There's uh, a couple down there um, which you uh, would have seen earlier. But yeah, they must have some kind of connection to Thorsby. I'm not sure what that connection is. Probably they were part of the Thorsby estate at one time. Or maybe they still are. And I was right. Most of the Laxton Manor was sold to the Ministry of Agriculture in 1952, with a further sale to the Crown Estate in 1981. It was sold back to the Earl Manvers Thorsby Estate in 2020. Laxton is best known for having the last remaining working open field system in the United Kingdom. Today, there are three open fields remaining, the Mill Field, the South Field and the West Field. There was also a fourth field called the East Field, which was considerably smaller than the others and was farmed as part of the West Field. This was fully enclosed and today is a number of small fields. Morehouse was partially within the East Field, but was mainly located within a fifth open field called the North Field, with some of those inhabitants also farming the South Field at Laxton. Laxton has much more conventionally farmed land too, but it's these three fields that make it famous. An open field system was a common thing in the UK. Fields were divided into strips and were farmed in common amongst the landowners of the village. A 1635 survey of the parish carried out by Mark Pierce, still extant and held in the Bodleian Library, shows that these three fields still present in Laxton today were in use at that date, but they were significantly larger than their current size. Originally, a single strip would have represented approximately a single day of ploughing. Such a strip today would be far too small to be really practical for a tractor-drawn plough. Instead, over time, strips have been consolidated to provide workable parcels of land. Although the village is now recognised as an important heritage site, it's home to working farmers too, who rely on that very same land for their income. 
The system is protected today by a parliamentary undertaking given by the Crown Estate Commissioners on their 1981 purchase of the Laxton Estate and by a countryside stewardship agreement. Laxton's strip fields were depicted on a postage stamp designed by David Tress that was issued in 1999 by the Royal Mail as part of their Millennium Stamp series. The stamp also doubled as Royal Mail's contribution to that year's Europa postage stamp issue with the theme of parks and reserves. As for the rest of the village, most architecture sits firmly in the local vernacular tradition, with nearly a fifth of the buildings dating from the 18th century and around 40% from each of the 19th and the 20th. St Michael the Archangel's Church, which we'll get to shortly, mostly dates back to the 12th century. After this, the earliest known standing structure is a farmhouse dating from 1703. Laxton and Morehouse covers a vast area. It's one of the largest parishes in Newark and Sherwood, which is kind of unsurprising given the field system and the fact that it has two settlements. It comes in at 28.44 square kilometres. That gives it a population density of 14.94, very, very low. Ethnically, it's made up of 99.6% white British citizens. The average house in the village goes on the market for £598,000. Laxton doesn't have a great deal of amenities. It's served by a bus though, two in fact, the 333 and the 334. Laxton has a small village hall too, located on the main road through the village towards Curtin. No trip to the village would be complete without a stop at the Dovecote Inn, and there are various bed and breakfast accommodations available too. The Dovecote doubles as the Laxton Visitor Centre and it's run by the village and relies entirely on voluntary donations for its income. Now, I was hoping to find something like this. Here at the side of the visitor centre, there's an information board about England's last open field village. Now, I didn't know where these fields were uh, before I came here, so I'm glad I found this. There are three. There are the South Field, the Mill Field, and the West Field, and now I know where they are, I can go to them, which is brilliant. Uh, some information here uh, on the left-hand side about when they were worked. That's the Mill Field, that's the West Field, and that's the South Field. As you can see, they're all divided into strips. Uh, so I'm currently up here, which is where the visitor centre is, right on this junction. I'm going to finish walking around the village and then later on, I'm going to go to the West Field or maybe the, no, maybe the, no, Mill Field I'll go to. It's the easiest one to access thanks to this road here. Because I do need to come out here for something and then Morehouse, which is over there, uh, is where we'll end up. The Church of St Michael the Archangel stands in a prominent position and is a landmark for some way around. The oldest parts of the church, including the nave and the pillars, have been dated to about 1190. The arches in this church are almost round, just breaking to a point at the top. They are of heavy construction as this was the period when the typical Romanesque architecture of rounded arches was just giving way to the pointed structures of Gothic times. The church is remarkable in that it was shortened when the tower was taken down in 1859. Outside the church, there's a flagpole, which I found interesting. The church contains a number of interesting tombs and other features, while the graveyard contains many stones commemorating members of families still living in the village today. So here is one of the open fields out towards Curtin. The strips within it have changed significantly since medieval times, with changes in technology. Whilst modern expectations and needs mean that all the farmers own land outside the fields, the open fields are not part of a museum or showcase, but are a living part of the agricultural landscape. So they're not the easiest things to film obviously because they're just fields um, and obviously they stretch for quite a long way and you can't really see them properly unless you're overhead. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll take a snippet from Google Maps and put it in the picture bit so I can show you what uh, these actually look like from the air, from you know overhead, an aerial shot. But this is one of the three fields here in Laxton, which is still, to this day, farmed by using the medieval strip farm method. There you go. There are two others. 
The Parish Council, with the assistance and funding from Nottinghamshire County Council's Building Better Communities budget, have completely renovated the old village pinfold. It's now in the form of an outdoor classroom where school children can learn about the village and its farming system. Laxton has the remains of a Norman Mott and Bailey castle too. This is Laxton Castle. In addition to this, there are the remnants of a substantial system of fish ponds, presumably belonging to the castle or to the manor house built later on the site of it. There's also two medieval mill mounds and ridge and furrow earthworks. On the small triangular village green, there's a tree and there are two signs on it. The first one represents what's under your feet. It's a little hard to read, but there's a time capsule buried under here. The other is for the tree itself, planted for a royal jubilee by Lady Bambers. It's guarded, it appears, by a garden gnome. Laxton is also the site of the National Holocaust Centre. Opened in September 1995, this was the first venue in Britain dedicated to the Holocaust as its primary purpose. The venue is based around an old farmhouse which has a purpose-built exhibition centre with a lecture theatre and a memorial garden. A feature of the garden is a black stone on which are inscribed the names of the Nazi death camps. So one thing we seem to have seen a lack of over these uh, last few parishes out here in Newark and Sherwood uh, would be war memorials. We didn't see one in Ompton or in Neesel or, or indeed Wellow. I don't think Wellow had one either. Um, so um, here, this really makes up for it. Laxton doesn't appear to have one uh, in the main village, but out here we have this. This is the National Holocaust Centre. And even though it's not a war memorial, it is a museum and it is dedicated to, of course, the Holocaust. Um, it's £9 for an adult to go in. I checked the website before I came here. We're not going to go into it. In fact, what I'm going to do, uh, which is probably a little more closer to reality than just looking at it around a museum. I was lucky enough a few years ago to go to Auschwitz and to see um, the inside of the concentration camp and so I have a few personal photographs which uh, I took at the time so I'll give you a little montage now of some of the shots I took while I was in Poland at Auschwitz. Now, just before we finish this one off with more house, let's give you guys the picture bits. Here it comes right now.
Moore House is two miles east of Laxton. Predominantly, it's a scattering of farms, farmhouses and cottages amongst a wider rural setting. These are grouped around three roads meeting by a single junction, Green Lane, Moore House Lane and Ossington Lane. It's sometimes known as Laxton Moor House. The name Moor House was a local name meaning the inhabitants at the house on the moorland. Known as Moorhus by 1231, it derived from elements of the Old English words moor meaning marsh or fen and hus meaning house. Later interpretations included Moor Husses in 1232 and through local association Lexington Moor House by 1324. The Moorhouse Beck stream runs through the village, rising from several locations in the south of the parish. The hamlet lies in a shallow valley, with the surrounding land higher except towards the east. The nearest forested feature is East Park Wood, around one kilometre away. It maintains a notable Grade II listed Anglican chapel. As well as this, there was also a small Methodist chapel which has been unused as such in recent times. The chapel is a key feature in the area. It's dedicated to St Nicholas and was erected in 1861 using a Gothic style by John Evelyn Dennison of nearby Ossington Hall, who was a local landowner. Okay, that's a bit of a bonus. There is actually a footpath here. Didn't see this on the map. I thought the chapel, the uh, Chantry Chapel over here, was going to be inaccessible. It still might be, because I think it is actually on private land. This footpath seems to run down the side of this field but uh, if I encounter anybody I'll just ask them where it actually goes uh, we'll see how close we can get to this chapel it's believed there was an original chapel on the same site built for the private use of Robert de Lexington early in the 13th century with the bell being reused in the replacement church the fields around Moore House were eventually enclosed from 1860 through the Moore House Enclosure Act with much of the property under the John Denison Ossington estate by the turn of the 20th century. I couldn't help but notice too that these areas around the chapel were distinctly bumpier than your average fields usually are, which led me to believe that these were earthworks. I was right. These are archaeologically significant earthworks that surround the chapel and extend over the road to the other side, but these have not yet been investigated in detail according to the website Southall Churches. And there you go guys, that is the parish of Laxton and Moore House here in Newark and Sherwood. Time for me to move on to my next one in this massive district of uh, Nottinghamshire. This has been the parish of Laxton and Moore House and I've been Andy, otherwise known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.